Hello everyone, today I want to compare the patch 3.8 limited banner characters Eula, Klee, Kokomi and the Wanderer Scaramouche or whatever name you came up with in terms of anything combat related. To start us off there will be a short rundown of each character individually to give you a short impression of their gameplay and at the end I give you my opinion on which ones to prioritize. There are no new characters this patch, so I'll keep it short. First we have Eula, this one is a classic main DPS or carry, meaning she will deal most of her damage while on field. In her case, literally all of it. Gameplay wise, she's very straightforward, is basically press her burst skill and watch everything get one shot. She mainly deals physical damage, so in terms of elemental reactions, there isn't too much going on, which means her teams all feel kind of similar. Most people will probably call Eula a hyper carry, meaning she is literally carrying her entire party's damage, and you will build the team completely around her doing so. Pick one Electro Sub DPS for Superconduct and some utility characters, that's all you need. Next we have Klee, another main DPS dealing most of her damage on field. Gameplay wise this character feels a little confused to me, her damage is kind of equally spread through her entire skill kill, so not pressing the burst skill on cooldown is definitely not an option, as opposed to Ganyu for example. Other than that Klee has very strong charge attacks that can even be empowered, you want to use these while you wait for the burst skill to run out. The problem with this combination is it results in a lot of pyro application which makes triggering melt or vaporize with her charge attack specifically very unreliable. Same thing for Bergeon. For teams Jingxiu vaporize is probably still your best bet though. Next we have Kokomi, this one is a support, meaning she's all about some sort of utility, in her case specifically healing and wide area hydro application. In terms of gameplay, it's all about managing her elemental skill uptime. Before it's about to run out, you want to switch back to Kokomi to press her burst skill to prolong the duration of her elemental skill. If your timing is good, you can have just about permanent uptime. Unfortunately, the UI doesn't track the duration, so you kind of need to develop some sort of internal timer, which obviously means Kokomi has a deceptively high skills healing. For teams, she is a very popular option in some Ayaka or Ganyu freeze teams, and basically any team involving the Bloom group. Last we have insert random name here, this one is yet another main DPS, again all of his damage is done while he is on field. His elemental skill empowers his normal and charge attacks which is the main source of damage and you are also allowed to fly around while it's active. When it's about to run out you press the burst skill because otherwise it will cancel the elemental skill early. He mainly deals raw damage but swirling elements is still important because it will increase the potency of his elemental skill. Doing this will also periodically proc some extra damage when he dodges. For teams I strongly recommend a shield character like Zhongli and some sub DPS to enable as well. Also Feruzen has amazing synergy. Alright, that covers all the characters and if you want my recommendation, this patch it seems very obvious to me, Kokomi is the best character by far here. I'm actually kind of impressed considering where she started, but eventually with more characters being released, new artifacts and most importantly dendro reactions, she turned out to be a great character. She's super versatile with healing, wide area hydro application and she can even cover some downtime in quickswap teams with okay damage while her burst gun is active. Yes, there is Barbara, and you can be fine using her instead, but at this point I'd say Kokomi is a considerable upgrade. Next, it gets a little harder, but I would say the Wanderer. He only provides damage and it's a reasonable amount, but not like amazing. In that sense, he kind of reminds me of Child. They are main DPS, but usually rely on strong sub DPS to get their overall team damage really going. Which is totally fine, but some people just don't like that fact. Personally, Scaramouche is also a favorite of mine when it comes to playstyle. His elemental skill is very unique and makes for fast paced active combat with the extra missiles on his dodges. Kind of similar to Sino, you are actively engaged all the time. The only thing is, while in air, actually dodging attacks feels a little awkward, which is why I recommend to run him with a shield character like Zhongli. Next is Eula. This one is the other side of the hard decision. Honestly, she could also be a buff Scaramouche. Reason being, her damage in general can be very impressive and in this game there are a lot of humanoid enemies which are generally weak to physical damage. And Eula is undoubtedly the best at that. The reason why I ended up rating her lower is physical seems a little lackluster in terms of elemental reactions. There's basically only superconduct. I hope at some point Shatter will be reworked because Eula could easily play that and if it wasn't completely terrible it would give Eula another playstyle option and make her a little less one dimensional I guess. And last we have Klee. Pyro DPS characters just have a lot of competition, Zhang Ling is a beast and to look at a more direct main DPS competitor with strong charge attacks 
Hu Tao is obviously overshadowing Li. In addition to that, I already mentioned the Confuse skill kit. Having slow and strong charge attacks while also having high pyro application are kind of conflicting concepts. Even Jingshou hasn't high enough elemental application to make Li reliable. Also, like I said, not pressing the burst skill is not an option since it's a major part of Klee's damage. Some people also say her normal attack chain feels clunky and I can totally see that. Definitely play the trial first if you're dead set on pulling for this character. It would be a shame if you play her for a day and then she collects dust in your inventory for the rest of time. You can make her work, but really make sure it's actually what you want. This is basically the end of the video if that's all you were here for, but before we move on from this character, I'd like to take the time to give my interpretation of what might have happened and how it could be fixed since I actually feel like Klee's kit is fundamentally broken. So if you're interested, here we go. Klee was the second limited character, so she was probably finished work even before the game launched. So it's kind of understandable, the devs couldn't foresee how their combat system will be approached by the player base after release. Like how the meta state of the game will turn out to be. And after they gathered that data, they released Yan Fei as the character Klee should have been. At least that's what it feels like to me. What I'm getting at is, to me personally, Klee feels a little abandoned, but what's never gonna happen, the changes I would like to see, is to rework her into a high pyro application main DPS. Mainly change the normal attacks and the passive skill to empower her charge attacks into something faster. Basically make Klee a pyro Ayaka. Again, the burst skill is already there, it's very strong. I believe that's a niche we don't really have yet. With this, Klee could easily enable some interesting Rosaria, Rosaria Melt teams, for example, again similar to the Ayaka Zhangling interaction. But back to reality, there you have it. I think it's Kokomi this patch as the clear winner. Honestly, at this point, I would almost call her a must pull over Scaramouche, over Eula, and at last, Klee. Alright, we made it to the end. I hope this helped you decide on which banner to wish on. Let me know. But before I go, I also want to share some thoughts about the game. Honestly, I wasn't very motivated to play Genshin lately, to be quite honest. Partially because there were other game releases I was interested in. The main thing though is, gameplay is very important to me. No new characters and no new map to explore is a little rough, but also kind of to be expected with patch 4.0 around the corner. And then there is Abyss. Which to me again is one of the most important parts of the game, as only a real place for endgame combat. But whenever I go here lately, I only think, okay, let's see what's gonna annoy us this month. Especially these guys are no fun to fight against at all. I'm honestly curious, does anyone else feel like the quality of encounter design has gone downhill since Sumeru released? It's a little concerning, to be quite honest. Well, anyway, that's it. Stay tuned for more videos. Until then, have fun and bye-bye.